We're off to the side of the building here and take a look. This is supposed to be a wall, but officials have noticed it is just engulfed in plastic with tape just falling off. School administrators say they're continuing to monitor guidelines put into place by CDC, federal, and local governments, ensuring kids have a safe start to their school year. This is Hoosier Spirit 2, now known as Indiana's official state aircraft, thanks to House Bill 1197. The suspect opened the mailbox, pulled the mail out from the box and into the car, and then drove straight off. This is Columbus's only nuclear bomb shelter, 30 feet down, and the only way in is through that steel door. And in Evansville, we've got a team working at the Salvation Army to grill up some burgers and hot dogs. They're also serving up some popcorn and snow cones for community members. This biplane's name holds a lot of history. 1943 Boeing Stearman. You think about that, 77 years old. That's pretty amazing. This World War II era plane once saw use in training young pilots being sent to battle. Now, it's flying through the skies above West Virginia, including the New River Gorge and Summersville Lake. Bill Chenard, the owner and operator at Wild Blue Adventure Company in Fayetteville, pilots this plane and takes many locals and tourists up for a ride. We really tailor the ride to the person's expectations, their experience, and also their comfort zone. Working with someone's comfort zone stood out so much to me, let's do this, that I decided to face my fear of heights. Passengers sit up in the front seat. They safely buckled me in, and I received a quick briefing. Let's go into a little dive, and then we'll pull up. And I'm going to keep it really gentle. It's going to be totally fine, I promise. From Chenard seated in the back seat. Then he and I were ready for takeoff. Chenard says this experience is unlike any other. This isn't really a thrill ride. We want to really grow the love of aviation with this plane. If I land and somebody says, this is the best experience I've ever had, I was never scared, that's really what we're looking for. I was off to conquer my fear. Chenard even let me take command of the plane for a few minutes, and it's a very simple, easy lesson. Chenard also says he'll do some aerobatics in the air if you're feeling bold enough. I wasn't feeling that bold. We flew over the New River Gorge Bridge, and before I knew it, we were making our descent and landing back onto Fayetteville grounds. It was so fun. It was a once in a lifetime experience, and truthfully, I loved every minute of it. Another successful mission over the friendly skies of Fayetteville, West Virginia. Reporting in Fayetteville, Katie Forcade, 59 News. I just wish people could see what I go through every single day at work. Megan Anderson is an ICU nurse in Evansville. She says her day at work consists of seeing the worst of the worst cases of COVID, with many patients coming to her with the need to be placed on a breathing machine or ventilator. Her job as a nurse working through this pandemic is more than just making sure someone is properly hooked up to a machine. Holding a patient's hand while they're dying because their families can't be in there or being the last person they see before they go on the ventilator, you know, you know, promising them that I'm going to try everything that I can do to make them better, even though I know there's probably a large chance that that's not going to happen. And she doesn't want to see more people go through this. She says most people hospitalized due to COVID are not vaccinated which is why she wants people to consider getting the vaccine. Even though it may not prevent you from getting COVID, hopefully it will decrease that risk of you um, getting super sick with COVID and maybe even coming to the hospital and maybe it can keep you at home with mild symptoms. And so I think that's why it's really important. Anderson says a lot of bad information is out there about the vaccine. I truly wish that people could just get the straight information to make an educated decision. I hate how politicized it is because to me it's not political. It has never been political to me. I do this every single day of my life now and even when I'm not at work I'm dealing with the effects of what this virus has done to my mental health. She says at the end of the day she and her co-workers are in this together to help people the best they can during this pandemic. It is definitely disheartening to walk out knowing that you know oh man they didn't get to go home today. They're here another day or they're probably not going to be able to go home um, but we'll keep trying our best and that's all that we can do. In Evansville, Katie Forcade, Eyewitness News. Somewhere in there is seven-year-old Eli Holden driving his junior sprint, the 5E. I've been doing real good. I have won a lot of races. Racing is something he and his family have been passionate about for years. That's what we do to kind of get away from, from life. It's our, it's our hobby. It's, our, it's what we love to do. 
But this was the scene of the Holden family's race shop Wednesday. I got a phone call from my wife. Just got a call from the neighbor. Um, about 1.45-ish that the shop was on fire. Princeton firefighters were on the scene working to put out the fire. Eli's 5E Junior Sprint racing car and another one were up in flames, along with seven go-karts, trophies, and other items. The kids' four-wheelers, toys, um, tools, um, yard, yard, yard stuff. And some aquariums holding fish. Most of these items are lost. And I was just kind of sad. Firefighters say they're still investigating what happened at the shop. But the Holden family says this won't be the end of the racing days. We would have to rebuild. We'll get what we have to get and build him another car. Eli says he'll be back on the track <laughs> as soon as possible. In Princeton, Katie Forcade, Eyewitness News. We couldn't understand why no one was picking up the Toys for Tots name and being able to get the resources of getting all these toys. But we realized this huge warehouse on the west side comes with it. Uh, but little do we know this huge warehouse has a lot of issues. It sat empty for three years. Over time, the roof has seen many leaks. It's caving in near the kitchen area now. Please, we need a lot of help. Officials say they're asking for donations of supplies. We need shingles or um, that are going to be completely thrown away with new rubber um, roofing. And then the side as the building, as you can see, needs completely new siding. So any materials that can be donated will be greatly appreciated. They say the United Union of Roofers Local 106 chapter will be helping them make repairs. It's a project they say that needs to be done if they want to get Toys for Tots back up and running again. We can't bring families in here with the smell of mold and with leaks. We have to get those fixed before we do any kind of work in here. With the end goal of joining these two organizations together to better provide to those in need. Salvation Army usually serves about 1,200 kids for Christmas. Last time Toys for Tops operated, they served 5,000. So that's our main mission is just to be able to serve more families. And hopefully we'll get 5,000 plus kids helped with Christmas this year.